unanimous. Hopefully. That's unanimous. Very good. It's a good start. It's a it's a good start. In attendance to our meeting this evening is uh, John Osborne, Michael Dempsey, John Christopher, and also on the phone Betty Gorski and um, Andrew Cox. So thank you all for participating. I'm going to uh, read out the um, agenda for this evening, and then uh, we'll go forward with uh, with the custom that we've started here, and that is that I'll read out the uh, minutes uh, from the November 30th meeting as well. Okay. So, without further ado, um, the reading of the minutes uh, will be the first agenda item tonight. Then we're going to review which something which I think uh, I, I believe might end up being the final draft, draft number four. And then we'll have uh, the balance of the meeting will be based on uh, the discussion of the methods to disseminate this final draft. If we so uh, conclude that it is a final draft, we're ready to disseminate. We're going to discuss how we're going to do that, specifically the final draft dissemination to government officials and department heads with communication guidelines and scheduling appropriate time. So for the public to understand what we're intending to do, is that we now that we've reached the point of a final draft and before we present to the Board of Selectmen, we would like to roll out this draft document for comment specifically from department heads and other government officials. And uh, subsequent to that, we'd like to roll it out to the public. And then once we gather all of those comments and perhaps implement some edit changes to the document at that point that should put us somewhere around february i'm going to guess the second third week of february and at that time uh if the committee will so charge me uh, one or two of us will present uh or we can all present but uh, one or two of us will coordinate comments so that we can make a formal presentation of the second final draft the one that was developed with potential inputs and edit suggestions from government officials and the public to the Board of Selectmen. Our hope as a committee is that at that point, the Board of Selectmen will tell us one of three things. We like it, we, we're going to implement it, we don't like it, uh, or go back to the drawing board and uh, fix a few things or edit it in some ways that they might seem uh, would, you know, would be beneficial to the town. Should we reach a negotiated settlement at that time? By the end of February, early March, then we will be in a position to be able to um, move forward our proposal for town meeting consideration, at town meeting 2021. So that's hopefully where we're where we're heading. So without further ado, let me read the minutes from uh, November 30th. Again, the purpose of this is so that people can follow what we're doing, understand where we are in the process where we hope to go and where we've been. So the uh, meeting opened at 5.39. The, uh, there was a motion to approve the minutes from November 10th. And then uh, I provided a summary um, of the efforts thus far to develop a town bylaw for a town administrative position. Again, for those of you that have been following our meetings, I know this is repetitive. For those who are new to this process or just following what we hope to do is to implement a town administrative position by 2021 by town meeting in the form of a bylaw. In other words, it will be supported by a town bylaw. And then after a period of time, a year, 18 months, or perhaps even longer, we will present a proposal to the Board of Selectmen to go back to the town and consider the possibility of making it a little bit more permanent, perhaps with some of the bugs worked out of it by going to the state uh, government, the legislature, and ask them to do what's called a special act or special legislation. Very similar to what we did with the five-member board where we actually uh, worked with a local um, uh, legislator, actually two of them, uh, Representative uh, Lenny Mera and uh, Senator Tarr, who helped us formulate a law that was presented to the state house to uh, subcommittees and ultimately was voted into law and signed uh, i'm sorry voted by both the senate and the house representatives and um, ultimately signed by governor baker but we don't want to do that coming out of the box we want to do that 
afterwards, after we've implemented it initially through our town bylaw. Now, there are some, there is a precedent that if the bylaw works and we may never go to a special act. Um, uh, what is the town that uh, has this uh, town administrator implemented just by bylaw? Does anybody remember? Was it, was it Hingham? No, Hingham did bylaw and then went to special acts. Okay, Hingham did do bylaw and then the special act. So did anybody do it just by uh, bylaw and stay there? As far, does it, do you know? West Newbury, did they do it? I think they went special acts, too. Did they? Did, yeah. yeah, so ultimately, so there's more, I guess there's more of a precedent that people, uh, most towns will implement with special act. That, that's that been my research. That yeah, it was which John. Special act. No, Topsfield is still bylaw. That's Some towns will do a, a bylaw and then the special act, and I think uh, John said that T Topsfield, therefore, might be um, 15, kind of an outlier that they, they, they did it just it. by bylaw. Okay. So that's fine. All right, so uh, ethical considerations was uh, kind of on our weighing on our mind at the last meeting. So let me read the minutes. Ethical considerations and written agreements pursuant to draft review commenting. Demore explained that he did not want to create an ethical trap for any town employee that comments on the draft bylaw and then applies for the position. It could be a problem for that person. Mr. Christopher suggested that we ask commenting employees on their intent or potential intent to apply for the position. Mrs. Gorski agreed that it, sh it could be a problem, but this would be a way to avoid it. Mr. Dempsey said we should be careful about restricting the ability to make comments or edits on our draft document. We all agree that we will ask only current town employees when we have the comment meeting about their intentions to apply for the position. So again, we, we express some concern. I actually expressed that concern and the committee here helped me resolve it uh, simply by making a disclosure. If someone wants to comment on the bylaw that we're presenting here and really becomes the author of some significant edits, I don't wanna find anybody including this committee, but certainly that, that person to find themselves in an ethical dilemma or trap because they've effectively created the uh, bylaw uh, that, uh, of the position that they applied for. So the next item, we did uh, some pretty intensive review of the bylaw draft number three. What we have here tonight is number four. So I'll just go through the line item because I'm reading out the minutes here. The draft number three of the proposed bylaw was submitted by the subcommittee. We created a subcommittee with Mr. Christopher and Mr. Osborne who has done 100% of the writing and most of the research of our committee. We're so thankful to them. Section two, item one, we added sentences about relationship between administrator and the Board of Selectmen. Mrs. Gorski noted that in her experience, this was an especially important issue to include. What, what we, we understand, those of us that have been in, in uh, government service for a number of years, sometimes it's a bit of a, an interesting and productive relationship between an administrator, or finance director in this case, uh, uh, or a town administrator, and the chair of the Board of Selectmen. We wanted to make sure that um, that, that didn't present any any unusual uh, conditions that could, could create some, some either open meeting law entrapments or ethical law entrapments. So we've actually attempted in our bylaws here to address that. Section two, item 2F, the administrator will develop protocols for the use of town property. Section two, item 3P, regarding the administrator's education of all employees and appointees on the open meeting law and ethics and make sure all recipients acknowledge receipt and understanding. Mrs. Gorski said that this again was a critical task. Mr. Demore will check with town clerk to see if she has under a state mandate to perform these jobs. Mr. Dempsey noted that the administrator did not have to personally perform the task only to make sure that it was getting done. So today I received an email and I sent it to everyone here. I appreciate nobody commenting so that we don't open, uh, violate open meeting law, but uh, Mrs. Conniff did get back to me, our town clerk, and she said that it's required by her to swear people in. It's part of her uh, job duties, and she provided the applicable laws. And regarding open meeting laws, just as we've all experienced it, her duties are very straightforward. She needs to remind folks that what has to be done, where to get it done, and to have it done, but she is not responsible for policing to make sure it is done 
and that uh, people are in compliance. So I, I sent an email to everyone this a very late this afternoon when I received that response. I will print it and ent enter it into the record for the next meeting. Mr. Osborne noted that he would like all references to law and bylaws to be kept as bolded text in the final document. So this document has bolded text, which will uh, we, we feel that as a committee we want to keep those items um, um, in bold, especially when it's referencing specific laws. Section 5 added a reference to finance and budget bylaw. Section 7 added the need to update a capital improvement budget annually in place in the town meeting warrant. Section 10, item 1, added the ineligibility of a town employee as an acting administrator to be considered for the permanent position. So that's very important. Again, we, we talked a lot about ethics uh, at the previous meeting. So this is an important line. We, add, we added a line so that the ineligibility of a town employee as an acting administrator to be considered for the permanent position would be would be ensured. Uh, Mr. Dempsey asked if we should note the differences in duties that an administrator has between an appointed position and an elected position. The public and members of appointed positions may not be aware of the limits to remove an elected official. Mr. Christopher added, will add more emphasis to the existing text regarding this issue. So that has now uh, in draft number four. So uh, second to last item, what should we do next? I, I suggested we meet again next week, and here we are, to approve the final draft before posting it for comments. Mr. Christopher said that it would be a matter of courtesy to send it to the department heads before we post it to the town web, and we all agreed to that. I said we will email it to the department heads with a deadline for comments by mid-January. Afterwards, we will post it and then present to the selectmen. Once approved, it would go to town meeting for approval. Mr. Osborne mentioned that we should ask the selectmen if they want us to develop a job description for the administrator. And I uh, suggested plans to bring, the, uh, plan to bring this up with them at the presentation and we'll ask about extending our charge. So effectively, that is the minutes. And so let's begin um, a re the review of the final draft. I, I open the floor to uh, Mr. Osborne, Mr. Christopher, or Mike. Um, can, we, can we make a motion to accept the minutes? Yes. So moved. Second. Motion to accept the minutes from November 30th. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you, Mike, for reminding me. So who would like to open up with the review of the final draft? Thank you. Uh, um, um, we, we really didn't do much as far as substantive. We added the language about elected Thank officials you. and the administrator. Yeah. Uh, the, the two areas that we discuss are very minor changes, maybe great impact, but minor in terms of text. Mm -hmm. And then John took it took the, the draft and he wanted to format it in certain ways, which I agree with, and he has more skill at that than I do. So it's basically been formatted. We reduced it from nine pages to eight. Yeah, that's very exciting. We went from nine pages to eight pages. And that's we have good. to remember, too, this is spaced one and a half spaces, so I think uh, yeah. the bylaws I've read from other towns are all single space, so that will cut this down, too. Well, we want to be effective, we want to be efficient, and we also have to consider the practicality that this is a document that has to be read in full yes. at town meeting. I think it's readable in this spacing now. Yeah, good. John, good. you might want to comment which section you is uh, <laughs> you changed, which I, I'm looking for it right now. Yeah, that would probably... That's um, um, on section... I, I uh, think it's section up. 5, yeah. item 4. Yeah. Section 5, item 4. Okay, let's take a peek here. Basically just said that his power to remove appointed officials doesn't extend to uh, elected officials. They shall have no power to dismiss any board, committee, or commission member who attains that position by virtue of a town election. Yeah, uh, we had a discussion about this. Um, Andrew, you weren't at the meeting. I'm sure. Uh, I'm not sure if you had a chance to look at it, but um, I know Betty had weighed in on this as well. We want it to be very, very, very clear that the town administrator does have, uh, should retain the power to dismiss uh, board, 
committee or commission member, but certainly could not do that with an elected official. So, so yes. we, we no, may I see that. Um, I'm looking at it now on my email. Yeah. Uh, section five, item four. So I do see that. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it's explicit and, um, you know, a, a few words, it just makes it clear. So I think, um, some legislative bodies have the ability to make certain rules and of conduct and behavior. For example, the United States Congress, mm -hmm. they can expel a member based if he violates any of their rules. Mm -hmm. uh, my sense in Massachusetts, particularly on the s local government level, is that with elected officials, there has to be some kind of a recall procedure to get them out. Yeah, and it, that's fair enough. Uh, an appointed official shouldn't have control over the will of the voters. Right. And. Uh, <laughs> Right. And, uh, you know, if someone who is elected does something terrible, gets himself indicted or herself indicted, uh, usually moral pressure and persuasion will get the person out. But a recall petition may want to consider that as part of the special acts legislation, but that's, that's a debate for another day. Interesting. Okay. I make it. I, I'm, this is just a suggestion at the if moment. If you want to speak just closer to the mic, I want to make yes, sure with the uh, mask. Yes, just a suggestion at the moment. Sure. I'm just wondering whether we should change the name of draft number four and just leave it at draft at this point, or do you want to have number five, number six, et cetera? I, I think since we're now moving out of our committee, we should just call it draft. Well, I agree. I think that's a well. Whatever goes to, out of this committee will be just a draft. Of just course, draft. yeah. Because yeah, I, the point. I do four and f three and four only to keep track of what we're working well, I on. I understand that, but now it's moving out of our committee. I think we can just drop the number four piece. Yeah, I think you're right. If we drop the number, that's really to communicate to us. That's yeah. correct. But the public has not seen us draft. I mean, they say, "Well, what's? Well, gee, I'd like to read three. What's the difference?" And so you're right. Absolutely. Yes, right. exactly. Well, I don't have any comment. I, I did go through it. I, 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 I knew there was there was just a few tweaks. But again, I appreciate the time that you put into it. Those few tweaks cost a lot of time for you and John. I really appreciate your time. Uh, you know, the whole process up to this point has been, I don't, I don't even want to ask you how many hours you put into it, but I know it's hours and hours. So At thank, any rate, the, thank the, you the, both. the next question I guess I have on this document mm -hmm. is that um, <clears throat> do we want it to be single space or uh, as it is uh, when we're moving it along? Um, do you, in fact, want to leave it as in this format until we put it on the warrant? Well, then I suggest we make it single space. This is another issue. I, I think, quite frankly, my preference would be to double space it so people could make comments in between the lines. But I think we have we have space and a half now, so that I think that's sufficient. It's readable. Okay. Then we go to the warrant. Whoever prints the warrant is going to have their own issues about how to. On the warrant, it may come out to 15 pages, depending on <laughs> depending on their margins and right. So that's right. Yeah, double space and with the margins at town meeting, I, I this could easily double to 15 pages. But it's it's not heavy lifting. It's easy reading. Yeah. It really is for someone that wants to be engaged in this process and make a a judgment on it. It's not heavy lifting reading. Um, if, if it doesn't displease the board, I'm, I, I agree with John. I, uh, John Christopher, I think double spacing was even better. So people can make comments and make notes and so forth. So do you want to do that? And, um, before we move this on, do you want us to change that? We can take that section that's ita italicized and make that regular text. And then we can make it sync double space if you wish. I think so. I th can we do both? Can you double space and keep it ita italicized? Well, uh, the, itali the italic italics only is only for our benefit. So that's let's just for our benefit. We're just making that to regular, that, that section five, item four, we're just going to make it regular text. Yeah. Now, now it, you've looked at it, and I assume at this juncture we've approved it. Well, I, what about the, the legal references? Those, those stay are in bold. Oh, and those, those stay. Those are in boldface. Okay. Those, those stay, stay in boldface. I'm thinking, yes. Yeah, those stay bold. The italicizes to help us read this document more when efficiently. When there's been a change yeah. or, or an addition. Changes, right. Understood. Yes, I agree. 
We, so you want it double space? I, I think we should double space it, make it look like a legal document, present it that way when we ask for comment, both the public and the uh, and the government officials. And then when people see it at the town meeting, they'll say, geez, this looks very familiar. I've seen this before. I've seen it online. Make okay. it look like physically, I believe in experiential <laughs> learning so okay. you know let's let's I, I just people. caution you that the mm -hmm. we'll move from eight pages to so probably 16. 12 to 14 well, pages yeah this is this is space and a half now so yeah i'm guessing 12, to, 12 probably pages. go up to 12 or 12 yeah. pages that's fine I, i'm okay with that okay is everybody okay with that that's fine yeah I and then you know it, you never know in the comment we might say, geez, you know, can you make this shorter? You never know. We could get that comment and maybe we'll say, okay, maybe we'll go back to one and a half. Okay. So we're not surprising well, people at town meeting. Okay. As long as we're not made, asked to make it shorter substantively. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's when we'll disband before yeah. we... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can um, make it, we can make it, if we go single space, I think I, one of them, I just playing around yeah. even with wider margins, I single spaced it and it came out to six pages. So if if okay. we single space it with these margins, it, I think we can get it down to maybe five, maybe. Yeah. I, uh, I certainly will play around on the computer, and John certainly will. So. And the font size is, is fine. Was it 15, 16? Mm. Yeah, it's 12. 12. <laughs> looks, looks bigger to me, but I have stronger glasses. Uh, let, me, let me just generally go around the table. Let me start off with, uh, with uh, Betty. Any, any questions, any comments? Um, Betty, anything that... Uh, Strikes. Well, as far as the format, I like the double spacing. I like it so people can jot down a note. And if they get, okay. if they get familiar with it, you know, at the onset, then the town meeting, they'll, they'll be very familiar with it. Okay, good. Thank you. Andrew? Uh, copies to the department heads, are they going to be physical copies or? Well, that's going to, we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. That's our, our, our next agenda item. Okay. Don't have any specific, anything in mind yet, but I mean, I have some ideas, but we'll go around and see what people feel about that. So <laughs> Mike, any thoughts, any about the double no. space? You're okay with that? Double yes. space. We'll keep the, we'll keep in bold the laws and, um, yeah, let's let's make this document look and feel like what it's going to be from uh, as a final product. So, okay, great. Shall I uh, move on to the next agenda item? The discussion of disseminating the this for comment. Do you want to take a vote to say? Yeah, let's that take a vote to final document. Somebody make a motion. So I'll make a motion that we accept this as a, our final document. All right, the motion has been made by Mike to um, uh, approve this draft <laughs> in its current form, and it was seconded by Betty. Any recent draft. That's right. That right? Th that's correct, yes. Uh, any, any comment? And how shall we vote? I'm in favor of doing double spacing and fine. Yeah. Andrew? How do you vote? Yes, uh, Can't same, see you. drop to four, double spacing, okay. the bold print, okay. and everything else seems fine. Betty, how do you vote? Ditto. Ditto on Betty, okay, it's unanimous. So the board approves a draft number four, no longer called number four, double spaced. <laughs> we'll put in bold all the relevant laws, and um, that's great. Thank you so much. Okay. Great accomplishment after, what, three months? Two and a half months. So. All right, the discussion of how to disseminate uh, the final draft to government officials. Um, I've got some ideas, but I'd like to hear from the committee members first. So let me start off first with John, John Osborne. Your, th like, your thoughts? I would like to uh, give a sense of urgency to uh, the department heads and the people and so I would like us to suggest that everybody have their full comments by the first week of January. Okay. So that they at least have a chance to look at it. They're going to have a chance to look at it uh, almost immediately now because after we've reprinted it with the 
the space and also distribute it via email, then we'll be in a position to ask them to respond. Okay. Should they respond to, I guess, should this respond to me or? Yes, I think that's an appropriate route. And I can flow it out then to Then you can send it on to us, that's correct. Can I just make a comment? If My understanding when we had that ethics discussion is that we're going to ask them if they had any interest in the position as part of their commentary. But I understood that we were going to have some type of a meeting, Zoom or otherwise. Uh, now we're sending out a draft for them to comment on through the e internet. Should we p put in our transmission that uh, uh, for purposes of, I don't know, ethics, uh, would you please indicate whether you have any interest in now or in the immediate future applying for the job? Absolutely. So, something in the transmission. Yeah, I mean, I could, I could write that. Yeah. That's okay. Fine. Simple enough. You know, based yeah. on a meeting of November 30th, the board suggested this. Exactly. Okay, I can do that. That's no problem. I um, just, I just assumed, to quite frankly, I'd rather do it that way than to have another meeting with department heads and. No, agreed. Uh, <clears throat> I, I think, I think I a certain a anonymity uh, yeah. through emails on, is in a more appropriate way to do it, yeah. so that if people. That the people are not looking over each other's shoulders right. and seeing who's commenting on what. Good point. Yeah. Betty, what's your question? Well, when they are reading it and, um, you know, there's a disclosure piece. If they were to decide or not, or say, no, they're not interested, but as we go through the process and get a little deeper, in, can they change their mind as long as they disclose it? Oh, uh, yeah. This is just, I look upon... My concern and Joe's concern is just starting out. I mean, people can always change their mind. Of course. Uh, right. You know, and after they make a comment and we change and agree to all their comments and they'll announce that they're applying for the job or something like that. But it's just, this is just like a, uh, a gatekeeper piece of uh, information right. that we need to right. just to consider what, what they're saying and the motivation for saying it. Yeah, so if someone discloses that they're not interested and they make substantial comments and we adopt it, um, at that, it's like a, at that snapshot in time, there was a very truthful and Statement. very uh, um, exactly. appropriate process. And then if the person said, well, you, you folks are going to pay that much for that job, I think I will sign up for it. <laughs> uh, I do think that at once, um, if I may interrupt, <laughs> no um, I, I do think that if, if we get the document double-spaced within the next day or two, and I will send it to you as an email and to everyone else, mm -hmm. um, then it's, uh, depending on when you wish to send it out, my suggestion is we send it out fairly promptly so that uh, department heads and others can give us their yeah, two pennants, so to speak, up. promptly. Okay. As part of the department heads, is that going to include the Board of Selectmen? Uh, well, are we yes. going to have a special briefing with them? or? Well, I, I, let, let me continue to go around to get ideas because I have one thing that I, I'd like to ask your support on. Okay. Okay. So, Betty, um, how does that sound to you? January 13th, we get it out to the department heads. We won't post it online. We're going to get it just to the department heads. And by email, we can leave some physical copies with Catherine if anybody wants to come by and pick them up. But essentially it'll be done by email with a disclosure re you know, request up front about uh, you know, whether you think you're intending to apply for this position. How does that sound to, to you, Betty? And then uh, alternative to, uh, to you, Andrew. So Betty first. That's just about a month away, right? Yes. In January. Yeah. yeah. Already, yeah. That, that, that works. Okay. I, I know. I think that works. People okay. are still not out and about all the time. They're, they are at home and uh, okay. can look this over and make their comments. Okay. Andrew, your thoughts? That should be plenty of time. Uh, having a couple of physical copies in one location that they can pick up if they want and send it out electronically otherwise. I, I think that's a good strategy. Mike? Yes. I, I, I agree. A, I, I have a comment. And comment from John. Go ahead, please. Yeah. In sending it out by email, uh, this has become, once we vote, 
it becomes an official document of this committee, public record, so to speak. I think it should go through the town email system, not with all due respect, your, your oh, personal email or my, my personal email. It won't email. be from me. Everything is going to Catherine. Okay, good. Yeah, I copied Mike Wood. Absolutely. Yep. Now, all, my communications have, all my communications have been strictly to Catherine, um, and Mike Wood copied with the... The only exception was today when I received the uh, message from uh, our town clerk. I just responded with a thank you. You know, appreciate your, mm -hmm. you've been very helpful to our committee. And I, but no, uh, the communication won't come from me. It'll come from, um, I'm going to guess it'll come from Catherine. Plus, well, you, could, you could have Catherine send out something yeah, with absolutely. your name on it. But right. I can, as long as I, it goes to the town's computer absolutely. You know, IT I'll, system. Absolutely. I'll, I'll word it for her. And I'll copy her, I'll send it to her, and then uh, Mike, uh, I, 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 every action, I think I always want to make sure that, um, you know, our, the Board of Selectmen Chair is aware of what we're doing, so. Um, and to his credit, he, <laughs> he hasn't made any comment, or no interference, no questions, nothing. It's like, he's just following the email chain, so that's good. We appreciate that because it, uh, we, we do need to act independently, so it's been helpful. Here's my, um, here's what, uh, you know, we're, we've done a good job here. Um, I just want to, uh, I want to share this idea with you. I, before I send anything to Catherine, I wanted to get the Board of Selectmen, or at least the chair, aware that this is what we plan to do and to get his permission. In other words, I, you know, before we, our charge does not have anything specific that we can engage directly with department heads. Uh, I agree. So I want to get the approval of at least Mike. Is it okay for us to follow? In other words, I'll send him an email. I'll send Catherine and Michael an email. Say this is what we're planning. Can you let me know in 24 hours if this is acceptable? And by the way, here's the copy of the email that I'll send to Catherine on how we're going to disseminate this out to the department. Do I have your approval? He might grant it to me and I'll accept it, or he might say, I have to check with the board and get a vote on it, and I'll accept that as well. If he can grant it to me right away, then we're on a, you know, we can stay at a, at a good pace. If we have to wait a, uh, use up a cycle, uh, a week, so be it. But, um, I guess, thank you. We're, we're, we should not be engaging directly with anyone mm. uh, in town, especially those in a position of authority. And we, when we mentioned department heads, I assume that's going to go to the police and fire. Police, fire, absolutely, okay. yes. Um, now we have an interim director as well. I, uh, sh we should, we should also. Well, he's a department head right now. He's, 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 okay, then we should also, you know, uh, extend the courtesy to him as well. And um, and then at some point, if we decide that we want to have people actually attend meetings either by Zoom or physically, we can make that decision. But I'll make it very clear that you know. People can't sit on this because we need to also give the public a month to exactly. comment. Exactly. Yeah, so. Okay, good. Well, that, that was my only concern. I just wanted to I, make sure. I have a question. Sure. Are you going to send it to chairmen, chairwomen of all the boards and commissions? Well, there. Just thinking out loud, mm -hmm. if I may. Of course. The question was directed to you, but I understand. I, I don't have an answer. They um, <laughs> so my, you're helping me out. <laughs> their interaction with the administrator may be very, based on what's in the document now, is peripheral. Um, I I don't have any problem with it. It's just that how you know can do, do we start sending it out to subcommittees and. Uh, bargaining units within the the unions and, and things of that nature. That that's all because it. If you look at this, it, it's it's a little bit like an octopus, and it gets into every aspect of the town government. But at a certain point in time, uh, department heads uh, they control the people under them. The department heads might not appreciate the people under them having access to whatever he. It's going to affect his performance, but. I don't think that's a serious concern, John, because we've covered this through these personal bylaw and procedures manual. I think 
we're, we are covered in, in that regard. No, but do you just want to send it out to everybody? I mean, it, it sounds like, uh, for no. example, the zoning chairman and people of that nature, uh, uh, I, 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 Conservation I, Commission it's chairman. It's a bunch of people. That's a lot it's of people. Logistically, it's difficult. It, it's not that difficult. And I believe that, um, first of all, departments aren't well enough defined. Uh, you know, they have one set of people who they say are department heads, but it doesn't include some functions that are, that are an important piece of what we do. And, you know, I think that uh, everybody has interaction with this person and may have some useful comments about some of the things we say in there, even as committees or boards or commissions, you know. It's important to get as much input from, you know, and I would say that's different than members of the public, and it's different than even members of boards, but well, chairs of boards. I think that's a question Joe should address to Mike Wood, see how far down the chain he wants to go. Yeah, because the department heads, uh, 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 unless they're given instruction, might well distribute this material to the to their employees, and maybe you don't want to do that. But getting to the, the Mike's specific uh, issue was with the uh, different board members, conservation, zoning, planning. Right. So, you know, I, I, ask, I think that's a decision the chairman or the board, board of selectmen as a whole should make. So here's the three possibilities. Department heads only. Department heads with committee chairs, board chairs or department heads only and then committee chairs by themselves and then the public. So, I mean, it gets complicated, so. But I'll have to present four plans, department heads only, department heads with board. That's fine, it's. We, we might, you know, the board might say we want the committees and boards to go with the public. Fine, that's a decision they but can But they make. need to make that decision. Yeah, after we, then after we give it to the department heads or perhaps more, then it's posted on the town website, correct? Yes. So everyone's going to, and even though there's probably not, we're going to get comments after it's posted on the town website some, well, so, some, by on. some manner. Hang on a minute. Um, I think the putting it on the website should occur after January the 13th, after the department heads have yeah, had a chance absolutely. to say I agree. what they want to do. And once that's completed, that that section is finished, we've t the, the turn, the, deadline for their comments is now complete, then we put it on the website. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's what I uh, thought we I, were going to do. Uh. So, what do you, go what ahead, do Betty. What do you see after it's out in the public, whether it be department heads, and then later on, uh, all boards and committees? What about the onslaught of opinions? Uh, what, what do you see happening? Are we going to recognize this document? In what respect, Betty? Well, I mean, I guess we're looking for something that we might have missed, or maybe maybe somebody will vehemently disagree. I, I'm, I'm just wondering, once once it gets out there, how oh, I, I, happens? I, I have a feeling that posting... John, you probably had experience with this sort of thing, and... Um, <laughs> just want your opinion. Well, I, I said, it, I think I said at the last meeting, once it gets on the town website, it's going to give the selectmen a pretty good idea how the, the public who's interested in reading it is, feels about even the position. That's true. Right, exactly. So I, I, ha Absolutely right. I have a feeling there'll be certain individuals in town that fancy themselves as professors of government that will make certain comments about changing the document, things like that. Uh, uh -huh. But I think, yeah. the, I think the, the public posting will probably smoke out a lot of people who are either for or against it. Right, okay. Um, well, I think as a committee, we want to retain the, the charge that's been given to us and to act in a quasi-judicial manner. So I don't think that every edit and change recommendation should be implemented. No. So we're going to collect information and then use our own judgment and judicious process to mm -hmm. say this is what we're going to propose and 
some of right. these ideas uh, we're not going to. Yeah, but we can them. keep a record of all of, of the comments, record, and yeah. if if someone needs to see it, and 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 we have essentially om omitted considering that particular point, but there is a record of it, and there therefore we can say to the selectman, hey, this is the total record of what we've received, then it's perfectly transparent, is it not? So we could lose a week, uh, which is fine. Uh, the other thing is. Um, sh how shall I respond? Can, can I get a consent of a preference of this committee? Because let's, I'm just speculating. Let's say that I, I present this uh, problem to Mike, and I say, you know, uh, we want you to decide whether we want to roll it out to department heads only or department heads with the committee and board chairs as well. Uh, how do you weigh in? Um, he might just respond and say, what do you think? <laughs> And if, he, right. and if he says that, that's going to save us some time. But I don't want to say, well, I think this. I want to say the, 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 the board has a consent to do blank. You know, you, you know what your response should be? Yeah. What Harry Truman said, the buck stops here. buck stops here. <laughs> yes. No, but we, we, we should. Uh, I no, think I, Joe's asking a question, yeah, which is a not unreasonable. No, no we, we should I, have a I, position. I, I've worked with Mike for many years. Um, he would say that potentially because of he respects our process and he respects this okay. board. Well, uh, my suggestion at this juncture would be, mm -hmm. uh, my point of view Your would be departments view. heads only. Department heads only. Mike? Everybody, Everybody chairs and department heads. John, how do you feel about it? Let's get I, I kind of lean to as just department heads. Betty, how do you feel about it? I think department. Last week I thought everybody, but I, I and I, I believe maybe department heads. Okay. They, they that's what they are. Department heads. They know their people and what's going on and what they'd like to see or what might change. Andrew. I agree. Uh, department heads. Okay, I'm not going to offer an opinion because we have a, a majority consent. Should we put it to a vote? I think we should. Okay. Would anybody like to make a motion? Move that we disseminate this uh, draft to the department heads only. Second. Second. Okay, movement to uh, disseminate the draft to department heads only. Seconded by John. John, how do you vote? John Osborne? Yes. In cool. favor, John In favor. Christopher, yes. how do you yes. vote? Yes. Andrew, how do you vote? Yes. Betty, how do you vote? Favorable. Michael, how do you vote? No. <laughs> and I'll abstain. The measure passes. <laughs> <laughs> don't feel crushed. I no. don't. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that happen to me many sure. times. <laughs> Mike, you're the record keeper. Right. <laughs> I can change. Oh, yeah, you can change the story. Can change this <laughs> story could. Oh, did something happen to the tape? <laughs> <laughs> so now let me ask you, we have a new problem. Okay, so when shall the committee members <laughs> receive the document? I think they should receive it as soon as possible. So, so if we give the department heads until January 13th, then what do we do? We give the we, get, we try and get a decision from the selectmen as quickly as you can. Mm -hmm. Give it to them before Christmas. They can mm -hmm. have a chance to look at it for approximately a month. The department heads. The department. Heads. Okay. What about the committee? and chair members if if if, uh, if the board of selectmen agree with our vote yeah that it's department heads only and then the chairs of boards and committees afterwards we give them a month also no i think we should give that with the general public the okay. general public will we, we'll go on the website and that's when everyone can join in okay I maybe, feel maybe as a courtesy to our board members and committee members we should send them just an email saying be on the, be, be alert to a posting of the town administrator, okay. just, just as a courtesy. Okay. You know, the more I thought about not including them, we're 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 going to uh, send this out to the department heads as a courtesy to them. That's correct. And and to be courteous to them, it's probably in the hierarchy of things. It's they get it first, then board committee members, volunteers, 
have a chance to comment after the fact. But also so. remember the department heads have discretion and if they wish to distribute it to other people, yeah, there's nothing can we can do about that. And it's out in the public realm It's out anyways. in the public realm and that's the way it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes it easier. I was worried that maybe we have going to give the department heads a month and then the chairs a, a, a month and then no, the public no. a month and we're going to do this in 2022. No, no, no. It'll be June. Yeah, it'll be June, yeah. So, no, no. So, so can you tell me again what the dates are for this? So, so I can... the department heads will have it until January 13th. And then the general public along with the chairs by F Valentine's Day, February 14th. We'll all come together in love. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make it Groundhog Day. <laughs> or Groundhog Day. Oh, Groundhog you know, we'll stick Day, with yes. The that's Valentine's. more like That's it. easy to remember. <laughs> what, what, what date is that? Let me make sure that that's a real, it's not on a Sunday or something. Oh, it is a Sunday. <laughs> well, it's okay. We can keep it on. You know, yeah. by, you know, by, by then, we, this way I can present it as soon as Monday. That's correct. 15th. And then that formally then goes to the selectmen for their comment. Mind they might well have comments to make before that, but nevertheless, the procedure will then be for them to finally look at the document and decide whether they approve of it or not. Yeah, the three things, approve it, disapprove, or we kind of like modify, it, but go, or modify, modify, go back to the drawing board. Yeah. Um, so you made my job easy because this email that I'll send to Michael tomorrow morning will be the board, the, this committee has voted. This is what we suggest, but please give us a decision in writing what you. These are like. the options, but we have voted this. Exactly. Exactly. That makes it easy. Okay. Good. Okay. And then, and then you, after we, so after we collect all the comments on February 14th, then you're going to give the selectmen time to give you comments separately, and then we're going to have a meeting to discuss all the comments. You know, that's a good point. Do we collect all the comments, reconvene, and continue to work on the document, and then the final final goes to the Board of Selectmen? Oh. Or yeah. do we don't work on the document, until the comments are completed, including comments from the Board of Selectmen. I, I think the latter is better. Get all comments in, including Board of Selectmen? I mean, individually, we, we, I hope we'll be sent the comments, you know, to... Sure. And sure. then we, individually, we can be thinking about what, what we okay. may like or not like, and... Okay. So we're ahead of the curve when we do And meet. we can also meet in the interim uh, when these comments are yeah. coming in well, and discuss agree. it. Uh, you know, we don't have to sure. collect the great mountain of <laughs> comments that I'm not <laughs> you anticipating. You think we're going to get a great <laughs> mountain? <laughs> you may be surprised. There may not be many. Exactly. That's, right. That's what I, I fear. <laughs> so, uh, I can, I, like a mountain. I can re remember, if you remember the vote on the finance director uh, warrant article, I think the article before it was raising the stabling fee from five to ten dollars, which took about forty-five minutes to an hour debate. Then the finance director article came up and it passed without any comment. So, so let me let me let me be clear about this. I want to go around the table here, Betty. Two thoughts: we collect comments from department heads, from the chairs, and from the public, and then we stop and we continue to work on the document and then present to the board of selectmen, or we collect um, comments from everybody, including the Board of Selectmen. We actually present to the Board of Selectmen, and then we go and work on the documents some more afterwards. Uh, John, uh, and I believe John Osborne, and I believe Mike is, the consent seems to be that it's better to collect all of the comments, including the Board of Selectmen, before we do any material changes to the Perfect. to the draft. Okay. How do you feel about that? Which way would you I, go? I agree with the second. So. Second, the latter is fine. Andrew, yeah. your thoughts? Should include the Board of Selectmen only because you can make the changes, submit it to them, and mm -hmm. then you got to go make the changes again. Just That's include right. their comments at the beginning. Okay. Mike, I don't want to speak for you. Can you just clarify? You feel all comments consolidated? And I think there's consent of this committee that We'll be meeting in the interim anyways, yeah, exactly. just to start processing and to even publicize some comments. Right. I, I would suggest that 
you know, you, you call a meeting once we get a bunch of comments. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay, well, I've got a big email to send tomorrow morning, and um, you folks have been really helpful to make my job really easy. Uh -huh. <coughs> if, you, uh, That's if you wait until tomorrow, mm -hmm. you'll have the double-spaced document so you can <coughs> then play with Then I it. will do that. Okay, well, await the double-spaced document arriving sometime this evening. Oh. That's fine. Burning the midnight oil. All right, I'll I'll be looking for it. <laughs> the light. My my uh, my my uh, wife's uh, grandparents lived in a town where the lights went off at nine o'clock. So <laughs> the electricity will run. Oh, they used twenty four hours here. So I'll be looking for your email. Joe, they used to live in Groveland. Way no, back. that wasn't Groveland. <laughs> now, now, now since it was you, a little village in Italy. And since we're double spacing it. I am going to change the font to 13 because it's larger, it's larger. and it's clearer. So he's going to change the font to 13, Betty, because um, it'll be larger okay. and clearer. <laughs> yeah, this for senior citizens, he can comment. <laughs> exactly. I think we should what, make what a special version. What do we have before us? Is that 12? For senior yes. <laughs> and for everybody else, put it down to like 10 points. <laughs> All right, so... Should we have a vote on that second item? Well, uh, that, we agreed. Yeah. Okay, we're okay. We're in consent that yeah, we're going to roll. Consent. It. Okay. We all agree. Okay, because we, I think we've had three votes in this committee since we've convened, <laughs> and the only one, and the best one was when we got John and John to do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> that was unanimous. <laughs> well, it was, it was, it was pretty, it was fun. I'd have yeah, to say. it's been great. It's been awesome. So. And then subsequent to all of this, once if we get to a point that, let's say, in uh, February where the Board of Selectmen agree to put this on with town meeting, then, then at that point I'll ask for this committee to support my notion that I had mentioned last time that at that point I would like for uh, a recharge or a charge to continue to work on something, whether it's the job description or we get involved in promoting the measure with the Board of Selectmen, but in, in some specified way so that we're not operating on our own and, and you know, in any capacity. So, and they might elect to uh, disband us, and that's fine. Mm. That's their prerogative. That's their prerogative, exactly. Should that happen, though, I will speak as, a, as an individual citizen for the measure when the time comes at town meetings. So. Absolutely. All right. Any other matter for the committee tonight? All set. Mike, any final thoughts, Betty? No, I think we're moving right along. Okay. I will. Um, I will. I'll. Uh, I'll drop off a copy to you because I'm going to be in the area the next couple of days. So I'll put it. Uh, I'll swing it by. Okay. Everybody else will get it by. No problem. Um, okay. Andrew, any any thoughts? Oh, I like the uh, quick timeline get those uh, answers and comments in from the board by the 13th, send it to the public, and yeah, right on schedule. We're on our way. So the email that I'm going to send to Catherine and to Mike, I'm going to copy everyone here. Just caution, nobody respond in any way so that you can see the email. And if you really are bugged about something, then, um, you know, uh, let me know. We'll call a meeting. But um, I want everybody to... I want transparency on this committee is what I'm going to be asking the Board of Selectmen through Mike. And his response, um, can I share that as long as we don't make comment if he responds? Yeah, just disseminate the communication. So, so if I, when I send the email to Mike, I'm going to copy everyone and if Mike responds with, yes, go ahead or wait till I get okay from the committee, you guys will see his response as well. This way here, it's very transparent, and then we know, are we on or not? Because if he responds quickly, we're on, and then January 13th, the clock is ticking. Yeah. Just as a point, the open meeting law really only applies to deliberations. To deliberations. It's just a communication, That's yes true. or no, that we've already asked for. <clears throat> yeah. So thank you. All right. Do I have a... Schedule any another other? meeting, or do you want to... I think we should by wait. email. Say that um, again, Mike. Is he going to schedule another meeting or not? How about two weeks from tonight? Yeah. Two weeks from tonight? Is that Christmas? Christmas Eve. Christmas <laughs> Eve, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I almost tricked you. <laughs> 
I, I don't think of, uh, it's not a bad idea to schedule a meeting um, the week before the 13th, the, the first week in January, because I have to assume the comments are going to be in by then. Yeah. Well, that, okay. yes, but, but remember there's still a week to go before they close the comments. All right. I mean, it makes sense to have a meeting just after the 13th, it seems to me. Yeah, that probably would make more sense. Let's take a look at the January calendar. January 14th. All right, there you go. That's a Tuesday. Thursday. That's Thursday? a Thursday. Okay. January the 14th. So let's go with January 14th, 5:30. We might be back next door. We might be back at the town hall. Well, hopefully, yes. And that uh, dovetails very nicely with February 14th for the public and the chairs. Okay, we're good. So February 14th, 5:30 to 7, or 5:30. Um, will be our next meeting. Okay. And about, um, I, if I get comments, I won't send them, I'll, I'll capture them all on a document and send them to everybody maybe a few days before, a week okay. before. How's that? That, that makes good. sense. Yeah, you don't want to get peppered. No, with, no, know. that makes sense. Okay. <clears throat> all right, so I'll, I'll capture, let me write this down. Capture. You might want to make sure that um, since we're going to be reviewing on the 14th, that comments should, in essence, um, be sent uh, fairly promptly uh, uh, so that we can review them. Uh, you know, and don't they wait. need to understand that. Don't wait to the 10th. We don't wait for the 10th, exactly. Well, of course. Yeah. No, I understand. I'm going to try to, I'm, I'm hoping a week before. Yeah, exactly. Even if, even if more come in afterwards, at least I'll. I'll do two mailings, one a week before, and then maybe a three, two or three days before. And okay. That's fine. Okay, very good. Any questions? Any other comments? No. Anything else? What, do I have a motion to close? Uh, motion to close meeting? the meeting. Second. Motion to close the meeting by John Christopher, seconded by Mr. Osborne. How do we vote? Okay. All in favor? Betty? Aye. Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, and let's close out 2020. Oh, don't. Let's close let's that close out. Let's close it out. <laughs> Thank you. I sure want to close that one. Oh, out. boy. Let's close it out. And everyone.